want to wipe out your bank records, anything else. A blue hat hacker is anybody who does it professionally as a paid service. You own a company, you have a lot of networking gear, a lot of websites. You want to find out how you are vulnerable to the outside world. You hire me, I run what they call penetration tests. I do from inside your network to see what resources I can work my way into that I don't normally have access to. I then try again from the outside to see if I can break into your systems from the outside. I write up a full report of what I've done, possibly even give you suggestions on to close those holes. Yep. Um, a white hat hacker is anybody who does it just to find information. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin your life. I don't want to steal any of your information. But I want to know if I can get into your network, just because I can. <laughs> I, I want to learn. I, I I want the knowledge. How do I do this and not be traced? You know, things of that nature. Um, originally, when the whole computer industry first started, people like that were called crackers because. You know, they're, they're cracking into something they're not supposed to be. Um, the media, when the first major corporations were hacked, they, the media themselves termed the crackers hackers, therefore turning a word basically based out of curiosity into a bad word. So, um, it just, it depends. Most ninety percent of the people you'll talk to, anybody that does malicious things in the computer world, you're a hacker. Be it a good one or a bad. The people that are very old school in the IT business, they will call crackers, not hackers. Yeah. So, um, and I'm gonna stand up here so everybody can see the screen a little bit better. <coughs> if you don't, do you mind if we turn off the lights a little bit so we can see better? Can, yeah. Just don't turn them off to the point where I can't. Okay, good. Okay. And when we were talking about the power off and open a link. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> this is the open elect distribution. Um, you basically just download it, put it onto your video card, or onto your SD card, put it into your Raspberry Pi, and because the Raspberry Pi has an HDMI output, you can hook it up basically to any television mm -hmm. that has an HDMI. Um, I use mine as a media player. I have a bunch of movies in MP4 format, and uh, anytime anybody in the family wants to watch a movie, right now it's a little bit laborious because I'm in the process of building a file server where I can store all of my movies, all of my MP3s, all of my family photos, and then through an NFS share, I can share that information out so that the Raspberry Pi can use it or mount that directory and make it available. Um, so right now, anytime somebody wants to watch a movie, I pull the card out of the Raspberry Pi, stick it into my laptop, copy that movie over, pull it out, put it in the Raspberry Pi, and turn it on. Um, so, and you'll see there's, you can get different things. I have a, a wireless USB fob in there so that I can hook into my home network. You can pull weather information, any other kind of little apps. Um, and then I, I have a small keyboard, I'll show again when the lights are back on, that has a small touch pad so you can move your mouse around. Uh, I picked this up at Sam's Club, it was on sale for I think like $30. Um, but mostly what I use it for is the movie aspect. Good speaker. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty darn good for him. But as you can see, the movie quality is pretty good. Uh, and being that it's an HDMI cable, you don't have to have separate cables for sound. You know, and then if you move the mouse, you have the ability to do your, all your fast forwarding, stopping, pausing. Um, you can even control.
you, but I don't want to watch that movie now. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and if I had any music loaded on here, you could play it, kind of like uh, depending on who your cable provider is now. I have Wow at my house, and you know they have the music channels. If you've got your own music selections you want to play, you can do the same thing. Um, other little programs that are available through the uh, Open Elect operating system, you can go through. I have a few turned on. Um, you'd be uh, you'd be able to see more of them if I had the wireless set up on it, but I don't at this time. So where'd the sound come from on that? that the just... HDMI. And it's coming right out of the uh, the projector. That's the nice thing about uh, HDMI cables. Before, when VCRs first came out and whatnot, you had your uh, like know, the cable that yeah RCA cable that ran your white and red for your left and your right uh, sound. Then they came to the three where you had red, white, and yellow. Yellow took care of your video. Red and white were sound. And then when things got even more advanced, you had the set of five component cables to get more advanced sound and everything. What's nice with the HDMI is it does both, video and audio. So basically you have two cords. You've got your power cord and then your HDMI cable that runs from the Raspberry Pi to the back of your TV. Um, one of my friends also does the same thing. He kind of takes it one little step further. His TV has powered USB ports on the back. So he doesn't even worry about plugging his Raspberry Pi into a wall outlet. He draws power right from the TV. Um, depending on what pages you read, they suggest you don't do that because it's not a solid enough power stream. But he's been doing it probably for at least the last six months and hasn't had any issues with it at all. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm trying to understand this. He's not using the power connector on the Raspberry Pi. He he's is. Using he is, but... <coughs> like the USB my, port from the TV is yeah, powered. My, my power cable... It's, it's one solid piece, Okay. but with a lot of, especially like Samsung devices, even the Apple devices, uh, you've got your charging cord that has a normal USB end on one end and then a micro okay, USB. Okay, so he's plugging it into the powered USB. On the TV. On the TV. Oh, yeah. his, his TV has a powered port just like your laptop does. Okay, all right. And Good. rather than plug it into a wall outlet, <coughs> you can just plug it right into the back of the television, and therefore, whenever he turns his TV off, the Raspberry Pi goes down. Um, you mentioned having a uh, wild for cable and mm -hmm. music. So you can listen to your music, your wild music channels on this thing? No, 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 no. Okay. If, if I, once I get my file server built and I put my entire MP3 collection out there. Okay, you can stream from there. Yeah, gotcha. and I can say, you know, I want to go to music, you know, go to my files, and if I had any files, just like my kind of like your own jukebox through your television? Well, there's there's sources of uh, material content out on the internet like crazy, I mean, right? I mean, yeah, it just depends. I mean, if, if you if you only want to listen to what you want to, they have things like Pandora, Fedora, no, Pandora, Last FM, things like that, where you can either pick an artist or pick one song, and those will kind of select for you based on what's like, you know, what you've already put in. But if you want to have your own, um, like mine, I f a few years ago went through and ripped my entire CD collection, you know, and I've got like 150 gig worth of MP3 files. And it was, you know, now I just carry it all on one little drive instead of racks and racks of discs. So I can make it available on this and I can select anything I want to hear. How do I uh, co convert a, a physical DVD into an MP4? There's a program that I use called Handbrake. Um, I use Handbrake too. Yeah. Um, there's there's some other uh, there's some other applications out there. I can't really even remember any names right now. A lot of you know some of them are you know pay for it to use it. Some of them aren't. Yeah. Um, Handbrake is a free one, uh, and it it'll run on any platform. It'll run on Mac. It'll run on uh, Linux. It'll run on Windows. And you can select what type of file format you output. So most generally, I, I, everything I do is MP4. Um, it, it works with Apple products. It works uh, obviously with the Raspberry Pi. Um, I can load one of those movies on my phone. 
and watch it on my phone anytime I want. Uh, I put them on my wife's tablet all the time. She's got a Samsung tablet. And if we're going on vacation, I'll load one or two movies up on her tablet and put one or two on my phone and then, you know, on the flight or whenever you got downtime, just watch whatever. I'm sorry, what was that? ISO. Uh, the, the ISO images? Yeah. No. No. Um, it won't play ISOs. No. So you, you, once you have the ISO, then you still have to use Handbrake or something to rip it into a, a video format. Uh, there are other systems that will play ISOs, um, but it doesn't run on a Raspberry Pi. Like I, I ran one called um, Linux MCE, and uh, it's a whole like automation system that mm -hmm. runs on your computer. And one component of that is uh, a video home theater PC, uh, and that'll play ISOs. Because you can have a pop-up menus and uh, the Blu-ray pop-up. Yeah, and, and a lot of times um, those systems, I think, don't they even require you to mount the ISO? Not, not, a, not the Linux MCE. Okay, just like, the codes. It as right, it's and but um, uh, the, the other the what's my video player I use? It, it just plays them straight. Um, like BMC or VLC. 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 Yeah, VLC will just play it straight without having to. Uh, uh, a question from yeah. So this one, basically, you're building for people who are inside your home, or also family who are not. Like you know, when you're talking about the NFS and all that stuff, eventually, or what you're doing right now, eventually, what you intend to do is it more like streaming it also so that people are not at home and kind of get to yourself. Right, right now, the first step is just internally in my house. Okay. Once I get my file server built, um, most of my family is not tech minded. <laughs> um, they, they, they love to know what it can do, but they have no idea on how it gets there. Sure. Um, <laughs> so, the, Well, the downfall of uh, trying to run it outside your house is your bandwidth. Because yeah, sure. uh, when you're running a file server and running this over your internal, you, you're running at 100 meg or 150 meg. And uh, once you try to go outside of your house, then it drops you. It's your upload of like 2.5 meg. If you're lucky. Uh, so that's where you have to.